Hey Sun Space Sun, I'm Daisy Victoria, and today we are going to examine how to get the right silhouette for an 18th century look. By the way, yes, my walls are still plain. Yes, I did move in here like a month ago, and I do intend to decorate still, but I haven't gotten around to it yet, so that is coming hopefully next time. I did, however, finish the commission I was working on, which had a strict deadline. So now we can move on to fully moving in. But first, a word on 18th century undergarments. So I'm working on an 18th century dress project. I've done a couple 18th century dresses before and I wanted to try a different style this time. So it's been a really cool project to get into. And I actually started with the idea of making 18th century undergarments because I wanted to create an Outlander outfit, which I still haven't done. And I wanted to create an 18th century Rococo Ariel from The Little Mermaid, which I still, I actually bought the fabric for, but I haven't started making it yet. But I am working on yet a different 18th century project. Before you make the dress though, you gotta build out the undergarments. In all those paintings of 18th century lovely ladies and in all the movies we see representing them, there's a certain silhouette that you see, right? And the question is, were women shaped differently back then than they are now? The answer is no, no, it's undergarments. And my mannequin here, haha, is actually already wearing them. But we're gonna take them off of her and put them on me so I can show you how they actually shape the human body, such as this one, which is the one these undergarments were made to fit. So it's perfect. Now the gown that I'm going to make is primarily based on the research of Janet Arnold. And I have this Patterns of Fashion one here, which I'm gonna be using to help me come up with my pattern pieces. Now to say 18th century is like saying, I'm wearing fashion from the 1900s. You know, it's a hundred years, fashion changed. So let's get a little bit more specific. So I'm really basing my design on this 1775 to 85 gown. So we can kind of roughly say this is a, you know, about 1780 here. So this is the late 18th century. I'm gonna show you the patterns that I used for all the pieces too. So the first piece that I made is actually the corset or the stays, and that is my own pattern. I know I based it off of certain pattern shapes like 10 years ago when I made the original, and it's undergone some adjustment iteration since then. The video on making the stays is coming next month actually for Cozy, and I'm looking at digitizing my adjusted pattern for that too. So there's that. The petticoat that I'm gonna show you, you don't need a pattern for it. You can actually follow my prior video on how I made a petticoat out of a bed sheet. I'll tell you a little note that's a variation on the specific one here versus the first one I made. And the other two garments that we're gonna go over is like a butt rump and a chemise or shift. And for those, I actually used the American Duchess Simplicity pattern, and I'll kind of go over that um, as we go through it. So I'll tell you a little bit about each garment as I put it on. We're gonna stop before the gown because that's how much we've got. So this is gonna be sort of a two-parter on getting the look from the undergarments and then getting the look from the gown. All right, so let's get started. I'm gonna put on the chemise first. This garment is the chemise or shift. This is the foundational layer of the outfit. A shift is really helpful because it's that first layer against your skin. So it's sort of a barrier between your skin and the layers that go over it. So in this case, the stays and the gown and you know anything else that you put on. A shift could be made of linen, cotton. I used a muslin for mine, and the reason is because it was very affordable. And I'm actually gonna show you a little bit about the making of this shift. This is the pattern I used for the chemise. It's a really simple pattern. It's mostly all rectangles. The pattern just made it go a little bit faster. One thing I thought was really cool about this pattern is actually a shortcut I've taken before myself. So the underarm gussets are typically a square piece that you sew in. And in this pattern, they're actually cut into two triangles, which allows you to attach those gussets to the sleeves first and then sew the side seam like all the way from the bottom of the sleeve all the way down to the hem of the chemise. 
and I think that's a super cool little speed trick. There's lots of sewing white fabric happening here, making a beautiful chemise. I really like this shift. It was really easy to make. I mean, it's a pretty simple shift pattern. Yeah, it was really fast to sew. Um, I did not do the ruffles that are on the American Duchess Simplicity pattern, and that was a personal choice because I wanted to make a really versatile shift, and I just wanted to make sure that I could wear it with anything, and you can't see it anyway, so. I think it looks really cool, and I really like it. Next up is the stays. This is sort of an early version of what becomes the corset later. So this is a boned garment. This particular this particular garment is one that's going to have a whole video dedicated to it as I make mine and I teach my friend who is a beginner sewer to make the same corset. So there's a lot more coming on how this was made specifically. This one is actually reversible. So I tend to like the side that has this cool like vine leafy design. I feel like it's very elfy, which is who I am as a person. The other side, which is sitting against my shift is plain white. So that's just a white cotton twill. And if I want to, I can flip the whole stays around and wear it as a white layer, like a white garment as well. This particular stays is actually actually boned with like a synthetic whalebone. So it's a really hard plastic that's meant to mimic the properties of whalebone or baleen that was used in garments back in the day when they were using baleen. And it laces up with finger loop braid that I made on my own because I like to do that kind of thing. Now this garment really kind of flattens out your front section. So this isn't really drawing my waist in. This is really made to be the size of my waist. What it's doing is creating that conical silhouette. So you can see here's the shape. That's really what we're going for. And this will provide that rigid structure underneath the gown. Next up, I'm gonna put on my pockets. This is a pretty standard 18th century pocket style. These have a bit of a fantasy embellished applique on them, but they work just great for this. I have some less fantasy pockets as well, but this is my white pair, so we're gonna go with this one. I also have a video and I digitized the pattern on how I made the pockets, so if you're interested, I will link that for you. Next, I'm gonna put on my rump or my bustle pad. This is super cool. I just love to joke about, does this make my butt look big? That's actually how I showed my friend when I had finished making it. I texted her a picture and I said, does this make my butt look big? I crack myself up because that's kind of the goal, right? To make your butt look big. And I just think it's so fun. I really like the ruffle that's on it from the American Duchess Simplicity pattern. So I went ahead and put the ruffle around the bottom. I think it's so cute. I do think it comes around a lot in the front. Like it kind of competes with where the pockets sit. So I could have made it a little bit smaller, but I think it's totally fine. It still works. I think this garment is just so much fun. All right, so let's actually make the rump. I'm once again using that American Duchess Simplicity pattern. It was just a really easy shape to use, and this pattern is super easy. 
at least for the chemise and the rump, I can recommend it because those are the two pieces I made from the pattern. I was able to make the rump out of the remaining part of that bed skirt that I used for the petticoat, so that was super cool. And I actually challenged myself to make it entirely out of that bed skirt, so where the pattern calls for twill tape to do the waist ties, I actually made waist ties out of part of the bed skirt, <laughs> so it was kind of a zero extra materials project. Again, we have a lot of sewing white fabric here. If you happen to be using this pattern and you wanna see how I did it, it's basically like making a big pillow in the shape of the pattern and then attaching the ties to basically where the front of it goes. There's a ruffle included in the pattern. You don't have to make the ruffle. It's totally fine without it. I thought it was super cute. So I went ahead and made the ruffle. Here I'm sewing the two sides of the rump together like I'm making a pillow, but it's for my butt. And then I stitched in two places where it kind of creates those three sections of the rump. And I stuffed it with polyfill, which I actually found a bag that I was meaning to get rid of. So here it was put to good use. And I think the rump looks super amazing. Now one thing that that larger silhouette at the hips does is in comparison it makes your waist look so much smaller. So if you notice my waist with this petticoat on looks so much smaller than before I had everything on top of it and that's because my hips look so much bigger. What you're seeing is that comparison between the size of the waist and the size of the hips. One way throughout history that we get like a smaller section of the body is not only by making that section smaller, but also by padding out other parts of our body that surround that section. So by comparison, it looks smaller. And that's also a cosplay trick, by the way. Now this petticoat is actually a second one that I made after the one in the prior video. And that's because the one in the prior video is the same length all around. This one I made longer in the back. So it's actually three inches longer in the center back. And then and when I come to the sides, it's the same length as the front panels. So I just kind of angled it, you know, like this at the top of that back panel before I gathered it up. That way it has extra length to go over the rump so it doesn't appear shorter in the back. Now, could I get away with wearing the other one under my gown? Probably, yeah, because the gown's gonna be full length, so you're not even gonna notice if the petticoat is shorter in the back. I went ahead and did it the right way, so always a bonus. I feel so good in these undergarments. I really, really like them, and they're really comfy. It's all made to fit me. So I have yet to make the gown, and I'm pretty excited about it. I'll show you the fabric. Tis this fabric. Tis lovely for an 18th century gown. If I do say so myself, that will be happening very soon. I hope you've enjoyed getting to know the 18th century or late 18th century, 1780-ish 
silhouette that I've been working on. I'm super excited to actually wear this under my gown very soon. And these undergarments are gonna go under multiple gowns, so in the future they will go under the Outlander gown whenever I make it, and they will go under the Rococo Ariel gown whenever I make that. I already have the silk for that, so the major investment has been done, in fact. It's just gotta get put together. If you are not already subscribed, make sure you do that. Hit the notification bell so you see everything I post here. If you got some inspiration, please be sure to tag me. You can find me as Daisy Victoria on all the social medias. My website is daisyvictoria.com. And a special thank you to my patrons over on Patreon who helped me so much to keep it together and continue creating amazing content for you guys. And as always, I appreciate all of you so very much. I hope you have an absolutely magical day and I'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.